we have 90 volt so let's check the drain the control signal we have 9 volt good the control signal is here let's check the output we have 19 volts so this MOSFET is connected to the second MOSFET as you can see let's check we have 19 volts let's check the drain we have 19 volts or the gates let's check the other side the drain zero volts here we have zero volt normally we should get 19 volt let's connect the adapter to the power jack so this connected as you can see now the power adapter is connected so now we can troubleshoot and track the voltages in the motherboard so here as you can see this is a packard bell laptop this is a failed laptop that we gonna troubleshoot and repair so let's plug the power adapter okay to the power jack and check whether the laptop can be turned on or not so let's press the power button as you can see no response normally when you press the power button of this kind of laptop the power button should be eliminated okay so let's press again so no response so it seems that the, the laptop is a dead laptop okay so let's check the power adapter okay so the power adapter is a 19 volt adapter okay so let's put as you can see the voltage to 20 volt dc and then check the adapter okay the black probe in the negative terminal and the red probe inside the adapter we have 19 volt as you can see <coughs> so the adapter is serviceable is good okay because always you should check the adapter okay because if the adapter is bad it's normal the laptop will not turn on so now we go in to disassemble this laptop in order to get to the motherboard because the failed part in the laptop of course is the motherboard so as you can see the model of the laptop here as you can see we have 19 volts 3.42 amps this is the input the input okay and here we have the model of the laptop as you can see we're going to disassemble this door first this is the ram door or random access memory door okay so let's loose this screw as you can see so here as you can see we have the rams or random access memory chip here we have two RAMs, okay? So this second door is for the hard disk drive or the HDD, okay? So let's lose the screw for this door and then remove the door, okay? As you can see, here we have the hard disk drive, okay? So this is the HDD or the storage drive for this laptop, okay? So after that, we're going to unscrew all these screws around the laptop in order to get in. Okay, so let's un unscrew these screws one by one. Okay, and then we will disassemble the laptop and troubleshoot the motherboard. Okay. So let's speed up a little bit. So after loosening all these screws, we will remove the keyboard and then remove the keyboard connector and do touchpad connector. And after that, we will remove the cover and then we will get to the motherboard 
So let's unscrew all these screws as you can see. Now, as you can see, we loosen all screws. Okay. So, as you can see, now we will remove the optical disk drive, as you can see. Okay. Now, let's connect the adapter to the power jack. Okay. So, let's connect it. As you can see, now the power adapter is connected. Now, the motherboard is powered up. So now we can troubleshoot and track the voltages in the motherboard. Of course, we, we will begin with the input. Okay, now here we have the multimeter. We will put the multimeter to 20 volt DC because the adapter generates 19 volts. Always you should choose the higher value in the multimeter. But let's remove first these cables for the Wi-Fi. So here we have the multimeter is seated to voltage DC. So now, as you can see, we will check the voltages in the motherboard. Of course, we will begin with the power jack connector. So let's put the black probe in the ground as you can see and then check these two red wires. Okay, we should find 19 volts. So we have 19 volts as you can see in the multimeter. Okay, let's check the signal wire. We have also 19 volts. Okay, so let's check the other side. Normally, we should check these two coils as you can see, these two. SMD coils we have 19 volt as you can see in the first coil the second coil we have 19 volt so good let's check the other sides of coils so 19 volt 19 volt okay let's check the fuse this is the fuse 19 volt the other side we should find 19 volts here this is the diode double diode we have 19 volt Okay, let's check the other side of this diode. We have 19 volts. Here, this is the current sense resistor. We have 19 volts. So let's check the second side. We have 19 volts. Good. So the current sense resistor is connected to this MOSFET, the first MOSFET. We have 19 volts. So let's check the drain, the control signal. We have 9 volts. Good. The control signal is here. Let's check. The output we have 19 volts. So this MOSFET is connected to the second MOSFET. As you can see, this check we have 19 volts. Let's check the drain. We have 19 volts. Or the gates. Let's check the other side. The drain, zero volts. Here we have zero volt. Normally we should get 19 volts. The same issue as the first laptop. We should get here normally 19 volts. Okay, so. This MOSFET is failed. Why? It can be the failed component because it received the control signal in its gate. But even if it received the control signal, we don't get 19 volt in the output. But first, let's check the motherboard, the whole motherboard. So here, as you can see, after checking the motherboard, I find that this IC is not normal, as you can see. Its pins are, are bad, are damaged, as you can see. So let's zoom in a little bit, as you can see. The pins 
many pins of this IC, so this is the super IO, are damaged and burned. Some pins are burned. Okay, so here, as you can see, we have the problem because this IC is responsible for the power for the whole motherboard. So let's check, let's zoom in a little bit and check the pins of this IC as you can see. So if you focus, as you can see, many pins are burned, are black pins, means burned pins. These pins cannot transfer the signals. So this IC probably is the failed IC and the IC that makes the MOSFET doesn't work. So, normally we can apply the hot air to this IC using the, pa the soldering paste and we hope that the problem will be solved. So, let's remove the hard disk drive first, okay? And of course we should remove the whole motherboard before using the hot air okay so let's remove the motherboard first let's remove the fan okay so let's unscrew this the fan screws so now we're going to remove the whole motherboard in order to use the hot air because if we use the hot air without removing the motherboard, you can damage the cover, the laptop cover. Okay? Because so now, as you can see, we should clean this fan. As you can see, here we have many dirt. This dirt can damage the graphic card. So let's remove these two screws for the VGA connector. Okay, so as you can see, do not forget to remove this kind of screws. So to remove the motherboard, you should first loosen these screws and remove it. Okay, the screws secure the VGA connector so here as you can see we have another screw so let's remove or unscrew this screw now we can remove the motherboard easily as you can see Now we are going to maintain this IC, we are going to use the hot air with the soldering paste to probably fix this IC. Normally the IC should be replaced, but we are going first to apply the soldering paste and the hot air. This can fix the issue because the problem for this IC is the bad pins maybe the pins are not soldered correctly to the motherboard that's why we're going to use the soldering paste and the hot air in order to be sure that the pins are soldered correctly to the motherboard now, as you can see, this is the hot air, so always you should use the hot air and move it in a circular movement, okay? Do not focus the hot air in just one position, because if you do so, you can damage the ice. Always move it in a circular movement. So, as you can see, so 
so after applying the hot air to the super io we're going to choose the continuity in the multimeter and to check the ceramic capacitor or the pf capacitor around this ic so let's check if we find any shorted capacitor means the ic is shorted so the first capacitor is good the second capacitor is good we should not find any shorted capacitor so all capacitor are good are not shorted means the ic is not shorted okay the problem with this ic is just in its pins the pins are burned and not connected correctly to the motherboard after maintaining the ic we should replace and we have to replace the small switch Okay, 